the the final game of, of Group A. Uh, I of course am Vince Trader Armor. Uh, uh, with you as always uh, here at Card of Magica. Uh, so we're gonna have our final game uh, against Terry. Uh, comment my uh, commentary. Uh, filling in for our yellows. Thank you again, Terry. Uh, playing Richie and his oranges, and we have a super special, wonderful guest commentator. The one, the only, Alex of Cardamagica. Thank you. Thank you, Vince, for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to always be on with you. It's a privilege, I would say. Well, for, I mean, could you say could you say it another way, though? I, I mean, that's, that's the only thing that comes to mind. I don't think so. You bring this to life, <laughs> that's for sure. So we're getting the roll-off. So I heard my favorite pinks won. The, the pinks did, yes. I was. You were saying that, that it doesn't surprise you at all with the mystics and things? Oh, I just think it's such a powerful ability. I mean, anyone knows that my favorite uh, by far lantern has been the pink lantern. The shape change of mystics for me is just by far the most annoying one to deal with. Followed by very the closely most, of red. The, the most annoying? I don't want to talk about blue. Okay? <laughs> it doesn't exist for me as a color. Not, not anything in green? Green willpower is annoying, but that prop con thing. No, no, no one from green? Nah. Not any one figure standing out in your mind. We all know I have disdain for Guy Gardner. <laughs> okay, there is no secret there. The hero of Guy Gardner. So uh, I'm blow up his bar. So uh, again, we want to just uh, take a quick congratulations to uh, the Star Sapphires played expertly by Daniel. Uh, moving on to the finals, uh, we have not decided if there's going to be a relegation round as of yet. So these points, as of right now, they do matter. So we okay. may have a second chance for these players. So coming in second in the group stage may still be uh, important if we have the time for the for the videos. Okay, great. So uh, the, the players aren't just, oh, it's the last game. This this might actually mean quite a bit to them for the future of this tournament and their seeding in it. And is this the first time we've seen Orange today? Uh, no, they, they were in our first game against uh, the Violets. And... Well, I, we were saying earlier on that of the the teams that didn't get uh, the top seeding, which is the the red, the green, and the yellow, that I thought orange and violet, being the Star Sapphires, uh, were probably the the most dangerous ones that could have been in there. And to have them both in the same one with yellow <laughs> made it potentially the, the toughest group to get out of. The teams look interesting. I had a chance to look before we started the stream. Um, I wonder how. Uh, Richie is going to have to maneuver himself around here. He does not want to get into close combat. No, he doesn't. And one of the things to note that we uh, we noted last time is that uh, Terry is filling in for, uh, for for Silent Pat. And again, we're not going to tell you the reason today why he had to be replaced. But the next time I have him sitting in the seat beside me, we will bring this up because it, it, it is an interesting story. I find a is such a double-edged sword. It's if you roll well, he can be so devastating. Yes. But if you take that click and miss, ah, oh, it's not only damaging but demoralizing. It, it can be, yeah. So How do you feel the, about the click? How do you think? Uh, I mean, th it's very well dialed. I, you know what? That's my favorite kind of click. Is potentially uh, potent on on his own. Helps your team and potential game changer if if the right things go right. So, uh, in in one of your many ill-fated Guy Gardner assassination attempts, where you had Sinestro repeatedly false away my so entire green team. I'm setting so <laughs> close. I, I I thought you had me, and then all of a sudden false waves went away, and the shape changes started hit coming up. It just hurts to be that close, like that hope. It's the hope that hurts. That's the, most. the thing, is that you have to have the hope in order for it to be dragged away from you. <laughs> I'm surprised to see uh, Superboy left off. I, uh, I'm interested if Pat was here to talk about his team mechanic uh, and why he built it the way he had. Uh, Superboy obviously hits very hard. He does. Um, but I know it's, his it point would have been almost, uh, almost a third of the point cost, but yeah. So we see the orange setting up on the uh, on the elevator, as we saw in uh, the last game. Just a, a quick for people who don't know this map off by heart, the um, the section where the orange started off is the elevation three, the the big pillar, the big H section in the middle separating the two big ones is your elevation two, and then where the orange lantern symbol is again is the pit. So it's one two three in that order. So Richie's setting up at the at the, the high on the high ground. And Sinestro moved all the way up to the bottom ledge, which sounds like it's a really good idea. 
but that actually is a really vulnerable spot. I can see that. Like I said, I think right now Orange is very well positioned. As we talked about, he really wants to avoid being able to be double tapped yes. uh, using our killer's power. Um, as well as most of those characters on that team hit hard. I mean, you, you talk about a curly like Sinestro. Uh, I can't remember, unfortunately, the lady with the dogs. Car Carcel. Carcel. And, but, and her pack. But that pack is devastating. Yes. You do not want to be there for no. one of those blades attacks. And then that's uh, without even mentioning Despitalis. Oh, that Both the virus, yeah. Oh, that's upsetting. <laughs> I never had the chance to play against it though. Uh, no, really? No, I just heard terrible the, the, things. The, the about the of play. This Patel's? Yeah. Hmm. So, so we got uh, Larfies uh, protecting himself by being a couple. Oh, I've actually never seen Larfies in action. Uh, R Richie played him really early on and uh, did, has done really well. We were talking about that because yeah, he was uh, my commentator in the second game after his first game. And to note, if I'm not mistaken, is that the actual lantern that Larfies carries around with him? Yes. Wow. Yep. Wow. Is that something commonly done by lanterns or is that something specific to Larfies? Uh, well, he's not really a, a leave things behind kind of guy. Okay, fair enough. But uh, every once in a while, you'll see a lantern bring their their battle and their uh, battery inside, battery into power, into into battle. But it's not a common thing. It's obviously, Sinestro has it right there on his skull, but it's I don't think that was a common thing. It is. It was a very very well done DC set. I, uh, I liked it. Uh, yeah, I would like to see a little bit more white lanterns, to be honest. Yeah. Um, just because I was I wasn't around during tenth edition to play. Oh yeah. Um, but with with all those ones, you, you'd obviously think that they'd yeah. be lacking. But then I was explained by uh, the good people here that uh, on average, uh, what happened was they just printed the Batman, which was completing the set, yeah. and we got the thing, which was kind of cool. Uh, looks like first blood might be drawn here. I wonder if uh, Terry is going to take a chance here and do that extra push. Sinestro is in uh, <coughs> in range mm -hmm. uh, and can do some damage here. Looks like it's going to be a hit. Now Richie sure does have prop cons uh, to his use. Yeah, and right there, uh, I believe Richie's identifying Larfleeze being the uh, the person who's doing the prop line, and can because Despitalis being a tiny character doesn't block line of sight. Yep. At least I believe so that's what it is. was a reroll, yeah. Yeah, but uh, going with Globulus and stuff. Yeah. That's definitely going to be a hit. That's be. Man, at this point, I think you just have to let it flow. You gotta. I'm assuming he's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on the dial that we saw, he needs a six or better to hit. I think so. So, would you have taken the team team there? Um, um is, sometimes you have a feeling as as a player that you have to to read the dice, see the situation. But uh, if from a pure number standpoint, no, that that probably wasn't the the best use of it. Okay, that that is going to be another successful hit. Going after Sade, one of the uh, uh, the the big gun for the uh, Orange Lanterns. I think Larflees is obviously more key, but Sade is the one who's capable of doing the most individual damage. Yep. And like I said, right now uh, there's a chance for another attack on both sides for Terry. But how many? In all fairness, he's moved one, two, a team of five. I think he has three more actions left. Yep. Be interesting to we'll see what he does with Bedovian. One, two. Yeah, as of right now, where Bedovian is, with only seven movement, he's a flyer, but he can't make it up to the top of the uh, of elevation three yet. He can only make it to the base, so he's not going to be able to get most of the shots that he'd really like from that position. Mm -hmm. I think I think at this point, if uh, I was Harry, I was just kind of see how. Richie would it be approached? Oh, it looks exactly that's like what uh, Terry did across the turn. 
He's in good positioning. I mean, he's a bit vulnerable. Yep. But uh, he did deal out some good damage. Over at the uh, bottom of the screen, we can see the uh, Orange Lantern Reanimal. Is that what it is? I always forget what the bugs are. Absorb. The Orange Lantern Absorb. Uh, harassing Carousel. <laughs> but that pack, it will be unleashed next time. That's true. As Carousel cleared last turn. Yeah, and Carousel never has toughness, so the poison from that pog is going to be uh, potential for a lot of issues. And the issue when Larfi is on the board, getting rid of those pogs is just the potential for that pog to come right back. As we saw in the first game, those are worth points, though. When you kill the pack, you don't get anything. When you kill those pogs, you do get points. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out with the total at the end. <laughs> <laughs> a little friendly trash talking from our players. <laughs> Always appreciated. <laughs> good, good friends, Terry and Richie. So how do you think, uh, I mean, while well, we have a little bit on the law, um, about the new ultra chase being introduced in Trinity? <laughs> 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 That's my best comment that I have for it. No, no, um, I, I'm really scared to see what the Trinity goes for, and I say and I call it the Trinity, not because it's been announced as the Trinity or because I have inside information about it being the Trinity, or that it's been confirmed to be at the Trinity at this point, but because I know in my soul of souls that it can only be the Trinity. <laughs> You think they'll put all three characters on one piece? I do. I, I think the Avengers got one, that DC was going to get one eventually, and when they announced it, it, it makes too much sense to me. Oh, boy. <laughs> yep. Oh, boy. Yep. Well, it's definitely going to be something to chase. Yes. I, I, I believe even if um, WizKid's assessment of the figure is correct, that it's not going to be an upper-level competitive figure. There's going to be a niche character. I think whoever pulls it is going to be very pleased with it. What do you think of it being, the, uh, being its own team base? Like inside the pack, it's just that. <laughs> um, where you'd be able to pull out all, all three individuals, like you get three dials, right? Yeah. See, I, I, I probably have a different opinion than a lot of people when it comes to team bases, when it comes to hero clicks. Where I am always excited to see team bases show up in my sets. I like them. Uh, I don't display all of them, but they, they, they are definitely visually appealing, which, which for a miniature piece is one thing that can't be ignored. Uh, they have to look it. If, if they're not looking at it, they're, they're not doing it right. Agreed. Uh, but I really dislike the, the games that involve team bases. Not because I, I, I don't like playing, not because I, I, I think they're le cheese or le fromage, <laughs> uh, as, as we would say a little bit to, to, to the east. <laughs> but I, I, I don't really like the one, the one base figures. I also don't like playing with Colossals or against Colossals. They're neat on occasion, but I wouldn't really want to play a tournament with them. But what I do like is that we get an entire team for that base usually. That, you know, when we got the Titan sets, we got lineups for different Titan bases that I really appreciate because I like the full lineups coming. I enjoy, I mean, uh, the first team base I ever got to play with was actually the zombie team base, which was a very unique team, uh, team base because how many clicks could be on said Yeah, them and uh, the, uh, the, the, both the AVX ones where you can put what it's mix and match, you can play, pick whatever figures you want on it. Including uh, figures that came from the Deadpool set. Uh, you were able to put the Red Hulk, you were able to put uh, Black Panther, uh, I believe even Deadpool, if I wasn't mistaken, there was yep. a Deadpool character. Um, so that was interesting. Yeah. And uh, that Mole Man ability on that zombie team base. It's nasty. Bugs on. And looks like we also lost... Arkilo. Arkilo. Oh, that's interesting. That is a big loss. Again, I'm going to get more interested to see what Terry's going to be doing with the two back rows he has. He eventually has to move them up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The pack has finally been unleashed. That should take care of the pod. Oh, just one second, guys.
So you're just uh, getting a quick uh, al alteration of the map. There, there's a there's a recruit that we can still see at the top of the map, but I wanted to see more of Carcel because there's a little bit of action going on there. That, I think that at this pog. point, this is pitiful. He cannot miss this attack. And doesn't look like he will. Yep, that, that's going to be hit. But do you think that Pog is going to stay away for very long? You know what? Like I said, I, he, I think what Richie's going to have to do here is assess where his threats are and where he wants to do his next attack. I mean, for me right now, if I'm looking at a team, I'm going, if I can take out Sinestro, I'm home back. Okay. Be because it's becoming, re I think it's going to be really key to the rest of this match, and it has been already. I'm going to read the quick power from uh, on um, Larfleys. So, uh, summon the orange power, which is his own attack power, which he has for the first five clicks of a uh, uh, quick uh, dial. Give Larfleys a free action to place uh, orange lantern absorb the pog that we keep seeing into an adjacent square. Give Larfleys a power action to bring in orange lantern constructs, aka globulus. Uh, into an adjacent square. Use these abilities only if you have no more than three total friendly characters, including tokens, with stacks, with either name on the board. So as long as the globuluses are gone and or the fogs are gone, there's the free ability to bring back at least one of those fogs every time. If I'm not mistaken, the yellow recruits do have pulse wave. That, oh, they do? That will on their own top dial. Yep. Mm, looks like a range combat expert is taking place right now. With just a thing range. But, uh, wait, I'm not sure if. Yep, we're good. Great positioning by Terry. Yeah. Just to be with him. And again, that's, that's some of the allure of the game is a seamlessly character that's not going to be in the fight whatsoever um, can just poke his head in every now and then and, and do what it needs to do. And that's so Bedovian, actually. <laughs> the little crab that just sticks. Hey, did that rock just blink at me? <laughs> It's, it seems pretty even. I mean, uh, again, losing a killer was a huge hit uh, for the Yellow Lanterns, as I know it's one of their main pieces. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's really hard to see how you're doing against the Orange Lanterns because, well, two thirds of the team are based in two figures, Saden and Larflees, both being under over 200 points. So it's hard to really get a gauge of how you're doing against them unless those are the figures that are going. Like, as soon as one of those goes, like, oh my goodness. A third of the team is gone, but you're chipping away, you're chipping away. The Sensor Core team, which is one of them, is built more around a team that I think I'd, I'd kind of play, where the, the points are really spread out. It's like, you can kill this character, you can kill this character, but you haven't really done an awful lot to my overall team effectiveness. You, you've eliminated some of my options, but the combat ability is still going. Yep. It's, it's, I, I just can't wait to see how Orange will defend themselves against that perplexibility. Oh, that's a smart move. <laughs> <laughs> and you're asking you shall receive, Alex. Uh, here's a wall. All right, then. And that was Globulus who, who put that out. So you said you haven't played against uh, uh, Larflees before? No, I have not. Okay. Well, uh, for you and the benefit of our audience at home, I'm going to read a power that's going to become uh, an insanely useful momentarily from Larflees. Uh, greed. Uh, barricading. Larflees can use barrier and plasticity, and of course, because we, we just went through the flash that everyone's being reintroduced to the usefulness of plasticity, which you're a big proponent of, by the way. I am. I am. I think everything needs its, uh, its counter. When uh, Larflees uses barrier, after action is resolved, he can use Quake as a free action as if he occupied all blocked and train markings placed yeah. by a friendly character with orange landing and keyword. So, the barrier that he just put up, the barrier that Globulus put up, Quick. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Yep. Ooh, one thing that uh, a lot of players forget when they use that is they have to indicate which square they're quaking from on any individual character in case of knockback issues. Oh, it's very smart, hopefully, to knock him back, but Snatcher does have flying.
Yeah, just a, a quick check. The, uh, Richie was thinking about possibly, uh, and correctly by the way, try, trying to give the potential knockback to get Sinestro off the roof. Yeah. But because of the blocking terrain that's naturally there and the extra barrier token that he has there, Sinestro isn't adjacent to the diagonal one anymore. He's only adjacent to those two, so the the option isn't there for that. But good good on Richie to be thinking about the the potential knockback for it. Uh, again, with the knockback, uh, just so it be noted, I uh, don't believe Snatch will be taking any damage because he's a flyer. That's right. It wouldn't be the damage, but it would be getting him off the roof. So it would uh, be taking away his line of sight and possibly uh, slowing him down, which is really good for the orange liners. And because Carousel has the pack out, she doesn't have the super senses currently. Oh, and Carousel's gone. Which takes away the pack. That's devastating. Pack's gone. So what does Yellow have left? They have two recruits. The uh, two recruits. We still have Bedovian and, and Despotals. And Sinestro and Despotals. Now, depending on where things are, that, that may still be enough to win. Well, at this point, he, I mean, he needs to just go for a freeze. A freeze or a freeze? A uh, Lurfleeze. Lurfleeze. It's a made-up thing, you know. It's like Darcy Dark Side. I'm pretty sure you can say whatever you want. <laughs> I, believe, I think it's intended La to be Lurfleeze. Lurfleeze. He's, uh, he's from France. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be great. You know what? I have you on live air, and I haven't asked you about this. Is I forgot to tell you the wonderful news. Of course, we're we're taping in Ottawa in Carter Magic Ottawa, and um, uh, Alex, despite being a wonderful person, is a Montreal Canadian fan. I am, uh, I am. and and that's not uh, that's not a stab against Montreal Canadian fans because <laughs> I know a lot of Montreal Canadian fans because we're in the area, and it's great because we have a lot of team fans from other things. But uh, your favorite player from Ottawa, JG Peugeot has been called up just in time for the Saturday game. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, he's great. Isn't he? I, I, I can't believe he didn't stay with the team. Uh, it, there, are, there are a multitude of reasons. It was never because he wasn't good enough to stay. But uh, uh, They wanted to avoid that contract issue. They wanted to use, save him for a couple more. Because, again, he does lose one entry year. I, I, th I think it was a matter of the, the figures. Of the, like they, they always knew what they had in him. Okay. And they wanted to take a look at what the players they had up at the occasion were. Yep. And that he was always going to be a mid-season recall, and I believe that that's probably a conversation I had with him at the time. I have an attack here. Ooh, no, that's, that's not going to hit. Not going to work. No. Okay. And I don't believe anyone's there for a team fight thing. Nope, no one's there. Ah, oh, he's taking a push. One of the benefits, though, for Terry is uh, in this game, uh, Sade wasn't able to pick up the ring yet. In the, in the first game, Sade did the, the biggest gun on the Orange Lanterns, picked up the Orange Ring, so plus one all stats except for damage. Oh, wow. Which, uh, Again, I, I still find that the cost of a five or six roll is so dangerous. Yes, I mean, it could be game changing, but I don't think game changing enough to take a turn to miss. Um, at least that's how I've always felt about uh, these five and six styles. I, I, I like the, the four and up. I think it gives me a little more incentive to go for it. I think I think you're right that it does, but I think what it uh, having those type of objects, if if you're not, if it's not the person you're carrying around who's doing the check, because if you if you if you have your taxi and you have your fare, which is one way of discussing the the taxi uh, carrier Absolutely. relationship, if you carry up and next turn the the fare tries to pick up, you haven't really lost any speed because the flyer is going to carry again next turn. But I think what really punishes is if you have the classic turtling strategy where I'm, you're going to come to me, it's like, then I'm going to pick up this ring and I'm going to come at you when I have better stats. Yeah. And uh, it, it, on occasion, can promote that the player who's thinking about, he's already chosen the, the ground of, of battle and wants you to come to it, may have to reconsider that it may actually be more advantageous to, to get the fireworks started a little earlier. I've just been in so many games where... Uh, let's say with the zombies, Dr. Octopus, I want that roll so I can be getting, I can get the item that allows me to outwit. If memory um, serves, that was also one of your uh, attempted uh, Guy Gardner assassination yes, teams. Yes, and, it was, and that, that for me, I thought was the game. Um, 
I attempted twice to pick up. That was one of the games you actually killed Guy Gardner, but were unable, unable to take yeah. with the rest of the team. It's just uh, Turned to Guy Gardner, no less. Especially with a character who doesn't have indomitable or willpower built mm -hmm. in. It's uh, it's devastating that it miss roll, and it hurts especially because you must be on the square. So it's not like someone beside it can be like, okay, well you failed, I'll try. Yeah, uh, you must be on that square to try to occupy that item. Side steps help with that. Side stepping onto it, side stepping off it, get more than one chance per turn. But yeah. They have a phase teleport. Yep. With the controller. Desertalis has been removed from the field. Is that Sinestro moved the way back Yeah, it's Sinestro all the way at the bottom there. Beside that uh, long uh, line O barrier. I believe Richard just hit for two. Never know. What click is Sinestro? I was just going to tell you what click uh, Sinestro was on, but he has the click number of six. But when I go to the unit section in HC Realms at the half dial Sinestro, click six isn't the click I'm looking for. Oh, While Vince is looking forward to that click, um, it's important to know and get your feedback for a lot of these games that we're doing and ideas. Uh, it kind of helps us move forward with these uh, programmings. Um, if you have, of course, any comments, please leave them below. It's uh, how we'll improve this f podcast. Um, it's how we're going to get better quality. Um, just let us know how you feel about them. If you have any crazy little ideas you want us to run through, uh, please let us know. We would love to try to put them into effect. Yeah, I'd uh, love to hear feedback. Yeah, so I was just checking in. Yeah, Sinestro is on the, the one click of Flurry in between his sidestep clicks. So right now he, he doesn't have a move and attack ability, even the sidestep, which technically isn't a move and attack ability, but it certainly is an increased mobility. I haven't seen much of the perplexing game, which is so, so important to the Yellow Lanterns. Um, I mean, I think at this point, uh, I'd be perplexing down damage. Uh, Max will be taking one a turn. And with toughness now in effect, uh, I'll be taking zero. Ooh, here comes the first running shot pulse wave. What a strong ability. So I believe with the, the three range, so it's going to get that Globulus at the top, it's going to get the, the closest pog to him, it's going to get saved, and just going to miss out on that controller. Six for 15 total. Does that at least hit the pog? I think the recruit will only have a, f a nine. Looks like it was a miss. Ah, what a yeah, so that was only a 15. Rule. So that, I believe that may have been a miss by one, by Terry, <laughs> missed by one. He does have another recruit that he can push. I do not believe he took an action this time. Nope. I think we're good with that one. There comes that perplex we were talking about. Actually, that uh, that space just at the above that uh, elevated, the, above that uh, hindering train, and just below that uh, middle pog would be an excellent pulse wave spot. Just outside, uh, we just one, two, no, we just get his. Ah, we officially have three pogs of the three same pogs. name. Yep. Oh, that nasty sidestep. Yeah. So the uh, the uh, the free action to activate to bring the, the pogs out, the free action to sidestep, and since we still haven't taken our first action of the the round, we're still in the beginning phase. Now we can activate poison. But again, for the for newer players out there, it's very important to be extremely, extremely clear on how you choose your stages. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you do not say properly, it could have been assumed that your poison went off at the beginning of the turn, uh, prior to the side step, prior to the fog. As it is, it's a free action by itself. I made that mistake myself, assuming they would be understood. Uh, mm. Never called it out, uh, and uh, I wasn't allowed to do it. Yep. Good lesson to learn.
Never make the mistake again, though, right? No, nope. no, no. Once is enough for me. So, so, sometimes the lessons so, teach themselves. <laughs> Terry needed that miss. Oh, he's in, a, he's in a really rough position as his recruit cannot take an action next turn. Nope. Which would have been an option with Arkilo uh, if I had Arkilo still been on the board. That's why, as I, as I said, I've, I've played the Alanders before and Arkilo is. So, it almost makes me want to never attack the Arkilo and keep him in the back and leave him as my last resort. Uh, just because. He hits. So he, he, yeah, hard. he 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 makes the entire team so much more formal. But you can't count him out as long as Sinestro's on the field. Like he he is such a strong figure. Going after Dovey. So now the combat reflex is on that pog the um, orange lantern again. Really, <laughs> orange lantern absorb. Uh, is going to be negated by the fact that uh, Bedovian is a sharpshooter, but that's not why he's there. He's not there so the Bedovian can miss. He's there so that's what Bedovian has to do on his action. So he's not shooting something else. But he is getting in. points for this. He is going to get points for this. I wonder if that barrier is going to come back up. <laughs> I believe that's probably something we're going to see an awful lot. I know uh, Richie's favorite color is orange. Yeah. Um, and he's been playing it for a while, so as you can see, he has a lot of uh, expertise with it. He's positioned himself extremely well. Mm -hmm. And I said at the beginning of the match, I just, he, he wanted Terry to come to him, and, and Terry had to take his shot, and unfortunately, it just it didn't pay out for him that well. He had a couple of crucial misses. Um, yeah, a couple early turns, and this, this, this game could have been looking far different. That's the Interesting. Thing, Did he just move besides Sinestro? Yep. And if I'm not mistaken, Sinestro still has his flurry? Uh, well, the Construct has access to Owit, so there's the potential for it to be Owitted. So as uh, Vince mentioned, he's going to be using his range combat expert uh, with the ability of his uh, uh, range expert. What was that one again? I can't remember what you said. Uh, that he was going to use sharpshooter, sharpshooter and range combat expert. Did I, I may have misheard. Did, did Terry say I was going to go one-on-one -on, -one on the pog? Yes. Oh. It's a bold strategy. Because <laughs> uh, I'm fairly certain Terry knew that there was only one click of life on the one click of life pog. Terry Perhaps does like to, to rub the salt in the wounds. Maybe this was just a turn in confidence in Terry that he knew exactly what he was going. And well, he he just, I think Bodovian is trying to send a message that uh, he will not stand for these pods. Well, I don't think he stands much. I think he rolls <laughs> and sits. I think that's what Bodovians do. That's how Bodovian rolls. <laughs> so he did not take away the flurry. No. Ooh. But again, one of the strategies that you don't necessarily see from other teams that the orange can apply is that you can throw um, these constructs literally minion wave and wave and wave after minions yeah. win the game giving up a lot of points to do so yeah it doesn't look like orange cares about points it, its main goal is to just win by a full knockout mm -hmm. uh, where that comes into problem is if they don't do it within time they can make themselves lose that game that's true The name of this game is Protect La Freeze. Oh, we're getting a push to Blades. Which will be a hit, but I, I believe Terry's just going for it all here. He's going to use one of his steam teams. At, at this point, the puck is taking some damage, so it's not like it has that much stats. Well, I think a successful Blades hit probably be the end of this recruit. And it actually pays off. What was a push to, to death? Yes. Yeah. That that's great. That he uh, Terry needed that for sure. One of the interesting th things to know, especially if you're playing in a local environment where one player becomes a specialist in a certain type of field, or you've seen them enough, is that not only does that player become more familiar with a the strategies, b the dials, and c what works for that team, 
but other players will note the, the, the dials a little bit more frequently. So Terry probably had a good idea that when the blade shows up on Globulus, that uh, that little blob isn't isn't long for this world. Or that world, as, as the case may be. The recruit was still taken down, but he at least took someone down with him. A great uh, theme team there. It's been a great match. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it, Terry's just one or two hits away from really taking control of this match. Yeah, but, and like we were saying, the, the oranges are... It's, um, it's a little hard to, to get a read on them sometimes because you're never entirely sure how well they're doing. I mean, you can always take a look at rules like these are the points on the counter, but sometimes the points down don't always give you an accurate representation of what, where the game is going, where the game has been, and where the game is. Well, I think for me, in a timed match, uh, this is where I would probably start uh, retreating into a corner and just burying myself uh, till there's no tomorrow. Uh, and I mean, if I'm by, if I'm by he one point, he's been burying himself, but just not in a corner. He's been doing it offensively. <laughs> Literally, offensively. It, it's offensive. And you do not see that very often. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's, like they said, that's one of the orange things that they can do, is that they they have the, the ability to do some things that you haven't really seen in a lot of clicks. Well, there's a new flash click that I'm in love with uh, that has an amazing barrier. Don't, don't say Captain Gold. No, no, no. Well, Captain Gold's great, uh, but it is his fiery counterpart that I enjoy. Yes, that's right. You like uh, that. Yeah, that's the the hit or not, right? Well, it got, it's a it's Did a double I hit? plus. Nope, miss. Well, okay, I'm doing damage sounds anyway. Sounds great, uh, except for when you're in a critical match uh, that uh, I was once in, and all I needed to do was miss. I should have been more specific to my dice as in not to roll crit, <laughs> miss, as it is the only way that my barrier would not come up, as it pushed me off of my barrier click, and I was the end of my team. Ouch. So many moments I've lived. So many moments like that. But you remember it, don't you? They're fun for most of other they people. They are. I am a Memorable. source of entertainment. Memorable. I think these next couple of turns are going to determine the match. Actually, I think uh, the next two turns, Bedovian getting up there, possibly into that uh, hindering square, right, uh, right on top, where had Bedovian been able to get there earlier in the game, I think it would have created a lot more threat because despite the fact that it doesn't look like a Bedovian pound for pound is probably one of the, the most damage output on this match core team. The issue is he doesn't have the mobility and he needs to have opportunities to do that damage. And he has a flyer. He has so a flyer, he so he can't be carried. He would have been nasty if he wasn't. Yes. I think you should have got size depth for being a crap. Wow. <laughs> Or roll. Yeah. <laughs> there was another successful hit against Sinestro. So Sinestro. I believe was for one damage. Yeah, so we can't be getting that. Uh, there can't be an awful lot of Sinestro left yet. Who has the ring currently? Uh, Sadie put, picked it up again, apparently. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Sadie. <laughs> so I think what we have here is uh, Larfley is going to, now that uh, Sanstro is probably on his toughness clicks, I think we're going to start seeing the, the barrier show up again because you're still doing a one. And uh, right now, uh, what's great about Sinestro Flyer is I believe he does have that win on his dial. Mm -hmm. And he also has uh, a Perplex that can give minus two due to the fact that uh, Richie's to figurines had actually two tokens. Uh, that should come in handy. Uh, it'll buy him another turn, guaranteed, because I believe the damage output on our flyers at the moment uh, is only... Uh, is it only two at the moment? I think we're probably in the perplex range right there. Okay. So I think he's got a natural three right now. But uh, when you're quaking, it's a locked value of two. Oh. So. It's going to determine the match right here. Ah. No. That's going to hurt. That's going to be an issue. Bedovian, do you have damage issues? Pretty sure you start with invulnerability. 
The good thing is, what do you do? the Ooh. Pog is not in range of giving poison damage this turn. One square away. With the sidestep? Yes, even with the sidestep. Oh, it started up there? Yes, it is. Right above the uh, side. Mm -hmm. And you get a six to hit. Ooh. Some, uh, some very low rolls from both the competitors at the moment. Uncharacteristic, missed by one, against missed by one. <laughs> Which, of course, is uh, Judge Jeff's nickname for Terry on his phone. Is it? Yeah, everyone else comes up, clicks uh, Daniel or clicks Pat. <laughs> Except for Terry, comes up as missed by one. Oh, no. I think Rich is not paying enough attention uh, to... Um, Bedovian? Bedovian. Bedovian's going to be in a great position. Well, remember, he's on lower elevation right now. Yes, yes. So, but yeah, there's the potential for him to be in excellent position next turn. Although, uh, Sinestro unable to move, will be taking that poison damage next turn. Ah, that's true. There is an outwit. Is, this poison, is the Pog's poison outwittable? Yes. Yeah, that would be terrible if you couldn't. <laughs> They're already bad enough. Well, Jeff, that a trait. Stop putting thoughts like that out into the universe, Alex. Really, Mr. Red? Yes. Against more poison. Well, I'm against other poison for other teams. I understand. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks like uh, she did identify. That's oh, but a uh, special power of Bedovian that cannot have him draw fire to it. That's right. It What's is the power again? Uh, I'll read it for you. It is, did that rock just blink? <laughs> Uh, when it isn't your turn and no right. other characters are within two squares of Bedovian, line of fire to him, uh, lines of fire to him are blocked. That's a great power. So one of the interesting things is that he didn't put Bedovian in the hindering terrain, which, you know, when you're reading that power, sounds good, but tail end, he does pick up stealth. So maybe he's counting on the damage not going, uh, and perhaps if he goes on the stealth click, then all of a sudden he doesn't have a damage reducer and it's not going to matter anymore. I, I think I probably would have looked at the, uh, uh, at the hindering train. There was a, a hit for one. Uh, Sinestro does survive this. Oh, you know what? Two, two, two. He's trying to get uh, line inside on line force. That's why he went to that square. If he had been uh, the hindering train like I suggested, he wouldn't have had line inside to line please. And right now you would assume line please is the bigger issue because of the plug generation. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Pogs can go on top of each other. I did not know that, Vince. Some, some can. The, uh, the, the stack that we first saw in... It's definitely Lord of the Rings clicks. I'm, I'm not sure if it's the Hobbit clicks, but okay. definitely Lord of the Rings. The, uh, the stacks. What was the advantage to the stack? Uh, if memory serves, you can only kill one Pog of the stack at a time. Yes. Is it about stacks? Sorry about that, guys. We just uh, wanted to have the uh, the players are requesting quick clarification on uh, sidestep and moving into places, and that uh, sidestep follows regular movement rules, uh, cravated with an asterisk, I suppose, depending on what you're talking about. But if uh, if normally your movement would have to stop because of uh, hindering or adjacency or other things that would make you stop, uh, you have to stop the sidestep. There's currently going to be an attack. Uh, Sinestro is making attack. So we got a flurry, I'm assuming from stack. Sinestro. It's going to be hit. Okay, 
it's one up. Uh, I think that somewhere. one poison damage left over is going to be a huge issue. I think it's going to be enough just to knock them out. Well, I think Sinistro has. Ooh, unless there's that's a miss, so now there will be two poisons. Uh, if he wasn't going to survive one, then I think he'll have a hard time surviving well, two. Well, the poison shouldn't, unless uh, Larflees has Outwit, which I don't think he does. The poison aren't going to matter for the toughness, because Sinistro still has toughness. And again, a point of note, uh, even if there's two characters, it, they are one at a time individually dealing That's poison. right, poisons resolve uh, individually. And I will make sure that when my round comes up... He would have hit with a knockback there. Mm -hmm. Oh, a double knock, the same roll twice. Ouch. Yeah. Fantastic. When, um, as been hinted at before, is I'm actually going to be representing the Reds in uh, one of the, the later later stages. And that, yeah, it's really important with the Reds that you pay attention to um, which order you're doing it at, uh, especially when you have Arkeel. And again, as a flyer, he did not receive uh, Arkeel, knockback. Archos. I he wouldn't take falling he wouldn't fall anywhere. There should be a knockback. But back. if he was knocked into the wall, uh, I'm talking about uh, Bedovian just uh, hit a side with a double five uh, for a total of twenty damage. Would there not been a knockback on side? There should, unless she has something that uh, prevents it. I was just trying to set some uh, clarification. So, uh, well, th thank you so much. Our guest commentator, uh, Alex, uh, caught that, that uh, with that knockback attack that uh, Sade was actually knocked back. I, uh, I've learned everything from this gentleman right here, <laughs> Trader Armor. Too kind. <laughs> that looks like it's going to be the match. But uh, just, just like uh, any good master will tell you, uh, I have 42 ways of killing you, and I will only teach you 41. I will keep a 42nd of myself, just in case at a later date I have to beat you. Understandable, Obi Wan. <laughs> Obi Wan. So uh, that's, that's going to be game. it. So the uh, the oranges were able to take it. I'm I'm not surprised. Like I said, uh, I think this. I actually believe this map was more advantageous uh, for the orange. Yeah. So uh, we're going to say uh, congratulations to our players. I'm going to take a, a moment to uh, have Richie come back and talk with us. But uh, I want to thank uh, Alex so much for a hosting us uh, at all times, giving us this nice place to play and a nice place to uh, to share these games with us. And uh, thank you so much for filling in for us tonight. And I, I can't wait to tell the story about why there's filling in for both uh, for Silent Path today. It's my pleasure. Anytime that uh, I can be of service. And uh, stay tuned, guys, for any announcements uh, for Canadian uh, Nationals coming up in the next year. Oh. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll have some fun stuff for you. If not, I know that someone will. Excellent. All right, guys. Take care. Thank you. Richie. So, uh, hi, and welcome back. Yes. Victor uh, uh, Richie Victorious. Yes, well, I was playing on home turf. I yes. was in Okara. I was in Larflees' lair, so I did have that advantage yes. for me. Um, I think the key with Larflees is to keep hooping out those uh, pogs. Yeah, it's um, it, it's really handy. Uh, it's a really potent strategy, and if you don't have the right options on your team to deal with it, yeah, it, it is un, it is it's not difficult to deal with, mm -hmm. but it can be if you if you don't stay on it, yeah. it, it can be problematic. Yeah. Like when you, when all of a sudden the characters numbers start going down, all of a sudden it's. Well, before I used to be able to take care of all your pogs and still get two attacks off. Yeah. Oh, now I've lost the character. Now I can get rid of all your pogs and only get one attack. Wait, <laughs> now I can only deal with your pogs? Yeah, and to be fair, this game I actually didn't use the barrier as often as I did last game. I noted that, yes. Um, now it is a good power. Um, I just, the way things were set up, it didn't make sense for me to uh, use the barrier at those, uh, at certain Yeah, times. you had alternate so, options er earlier on. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, sticking around in the high ground there and having him come to me was a good, uh, good strategy as well. Oh uh, well, obviously the game point uh, <laughs> to, to be true. Um, was there anything uh, when you looked across the uh, the map 
and uh, not looking at Terry because obviously yeah, you gaze into Terry's yeah. eyes quite often. <laughs> but uh, when you were looking at the figures on the other side of the map, was there anything that stood out to you that thinking, I have to deal with this or oh? oh. It's Carousel in the pack. It was, in the pack. It was my my first target, and I was just lucky I was where I was because I got to keep sending pogs after her. Uh, she didn't really have any uh, modifiers right. to uh, to prevent the poison. So when she was gone, were you kind of thinking that because you already have a poisoning team going on and potential quaking barrier that uh, that uh, Death Vitalis should be at least uh, decently manageable? Yeah, as an old, issue that oh yeah, that's a, a, lot, a lot of teams can yeah. call it. He, the Death Vitalis can just chew through. because he's so little, but uh, I couldn't see him. He was tiny. <laughs> he was. Uh, uh, very useful where Larflees again was positioned because mm -hmm. I could put out sidestep poison on Despotalis and and uh, it only passed by me once and then the second turn around I realized I could outwit his poison ability. <laughs> so that uh, became a factor because I took some uh, some heavy poison in the beginning from Despotalis. Yes. So I uh, want to congratulation on the game. Uh, it's getting late for us because we've already we had a, we had a, a slightly later start tonight. So we're gonna say uh, good night to you for now. So this is the end of Group A, which was supposed to be Group C, but um, we're gonna figure out when the next groups are, and we will we'll hopefully have those for you soon. I know I'm looking forward to burning everyone in my group yeah. with the reds. Uh, you're coming back with at least the blues. At least the blues. At least Maybe the blues. The oranges. Yeah, due to holiday scheduling, we had all uh, players for all of the teams ready to go, but there may be some shuffling going on, and depending on when the finals are, we may actually require to have different players playing the teams for the finals for timing issues. Yeah. But uh, uh, hopefully you guys are interested uh, and uh, liked oh. our liked our offering today. I know the players when I when I mentioned to them, they thought it was a really cool idea. Yeah. So uh, always happy to share. Uh, uh, the fun that we have locally, gl uh, globally, as, as it were. I'm, and I'm always up for more light stuff, so. <laughs> yes. So, uh, good night for now. Uh, thank you for uh, Carta Magica. In the event that I don't get a chance to talk to you online before the, the Festivus yeah. uh, occasions. Happy holidays. Happy holidays from uh, us and ours and to you and yours. Hey. Uh, not from Terry. No. Terry oh, no, care. Terry's okay with this one. Oh, okay. It, was it the rhyming? Is that what allowed it to go? It was, the, it was uh, there weren't enough rhymes the first time. So Terry's <laughs> etrigan? <laughs> he approves of et 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 etriganing. <laughs> yes, so uh, good night.